All right. Today we're going to start discrete probability. Um, this is going to be the basic stuff, at least. And this will not cover continuous probability. There's no continuous probability in this course. If you're looking for that, you would probably take an intro stats course. That's not this. So we're only going to cover probability with integers and non-continuous sets. So here's some definitions, uh, just so we're consistent and you know what notation I use, and it might be different from what you've seen. So our capital S is going to be the sample space. This is a cursive S, and any capital letter is going to be a subset of our sample space, and that's going to be called an event. So when we say that the probability of an event E is going to occur, this is PE, some texts will use PRE. I don't like writing that R out every time, so I take it out. Some people may confuse it with the power set, but again, if I use the power set, I use that P for the power set. So there is a distinction here. This is the probability, and it's the number of elements in E divided by the number of elements in the sample space. So that's basic definitions. Let's do a problem right away. Jane tosses two fair coins. What is the probability of getting one head? This is exactly one head. So I'll make this super clear, exactly one head. Let's write out a sample space. So how many ways can she toss two coins? Well, in her first toss, she could get the first coin as a head and the second coin as a head. The first coin is a head, and the second is a tails. The first is a tails, the second is a head, or the first is a tails, and the second is a tails. So there's four possible ways of throwing it. Now, our event E is going to be the case where she gets either a head and a tail, or a tail and a head. So, the probability of that event happening is the number of elements in our event over the number of elements in our sample space. So this is going to be 2 divided by 4, which is 1 half. So it's a nice simple problem. Now there's something more we can do with this. If we get the probability of A, we can find the probability of not A, or A complement. So the complement is everything that is not in that set. And this is going to be equal to 1 minus the probability of A. We'll prove this in the next video. So, what is the probability of not getting two heads? So, let's find the probability of two heads. So, this is equal to the case where we get HH over the sample space. So this is going to be 1 fourth. Now, the probability of not getting two heads is going to be 1 minus the probability of getting two heads, which is going to equal 1 minus 1 fourth, which is just equal to 3 fourths. And we could do this with the sample space, so the probability of not getting two heads, well, that's going to be this situation, whoa, that was weird. That's going to be this situation, this situation, and this situation, which is three out of four. So it works with our intuition, and by using a simple example, we can verify this. So that's kind of nice. We can find complements. Now let's do some combinatorics problem. This is why I did the counting review. So. Given a deck of 52 cards, we draw 5. Now what is the probability of getting 3 aces and 2 jacks? Well, this is going to be this event, so what is the event of getting 3 aces and 2 jacks? Well, there's 4 aces, so out of the 4 aces we're going to choose 3 of them, and out of the 4 jacks we're going to choose 2 of them. So that's the event E happening. Now, what is the sample space? Well, the sample space is all the possible combinations of cards we can draw, so that's going to be 52 choose 3. So this is 4 choose 3 times 4 choose 2 over 52 choose, sorry, this is 52 choose 
5, because we chose 5 cards. So it's over 52, choose 5, because out of 52 cards, we drew 5 of them. What about 3 aces in a pair? Well, again, this is going to be something over 52, choose 5. So 3 aces is going to be, out of 4 aces, we choose 3. Now, and a pair, well, okay, so there's aces through tens, jacks, queens, and kings. We can't choose aces, so there's 12 other suits, or there's 12 other cards types that we can pick from. There's 12 other number or face cards, and we're going to pick one of them. And then out of those 12 so, so whichever one we chose, if we chose a four, then we have to choose two of those four cards. And if we picked a six, then we have to choose two of those sixes. Or if we chose a jack, we'd have to cho choose two of those jacks. So this is going to be four choose three aces times 12 choose one number or face cards times four choose two, which is two out of those four cards that we picked out of the 12. And this is all over 52 choose 5, because we picked, because that's our sample space. So this is just the probability of an event, or the number of elements in an event, over the number of elements in the sample space. So, make sure I don't have another question there. Here's another question. I toss a coin, and then I roll a six-sided die. What is the sample space? Well, okay. Our first move, we can either pick heads, or we can pick tails. Then after, we're going to roll a six-sided die. So you might pick a one, you might get a two, you might get a three, you might get a four, and so on. And same with tails. So that's the same thing. So what we get is, at the end of each of these branches, we get a pair. So heads one, heads two, heads three, and this goes all the way down to tails one through tails six. So our sample space is going to be the set of H1, H2, and this goes all the way up to H6, and then our next one will be tails one, all the way up to tails six. So our sample space has 12 elements in it. These are ordered pairs because we toss a coin and then we roll a six-sided die. So that's our sample space. Now suppose we have the following events. Event A says that a head appears, and event B says that the number three appears. So what is the probability of A happening? Well, heads occurs in six out of the 12 scenarios. So that's one half. Now a three appearing, this occurs in two out of the 12 scenarios, and this is gonna be in one six of the scenarios because you can't roll a number on a coin. You can only roll it on a die. And there's six possible choices on the dice, so that's a one in six chance. Now what is the probability of not B? Well, this is the probability that of 1, 2, 4, 5, or 6 appears. And that's going to be 5 sixths. This, this is also the same as 1 minus the probability of V. Alright, now what are the chances that both of those appears? Well, there's only one scenario where a head appears and a 3 appears. And there's 12 total scenarios. So that's 1 twelfth. Now what about if a head appears or a three appears? Well, there's six and 12 scenarios where a head appears, and then there's two and 12 scenarios where a three appears. But what happened was we counted the scenario where there's a head and a three. So we have to subtract that scenario. So really, there's seven twelfths chance that A or B happens. 
So this is PA plus PB minus the probability of A and B. Okay, so you're thinking, why? And I'm going to explain this again in the next video, but I think it's good to do this now too. So if we have an event A and B. So this is our heads here. This is our head. And this is our three. Well, we know that in this whole bubble here, there is six. And we know that in the whole bubble of there being a three, there's two scenarios where this happens. There is when there's an H and a three, and a tails and a three. And in this head, we have H1, H2, all the way to H6. In fact, I'm going to include H3 in here. But this overlapping area here has H3 in there. But what the problem is that we counted H3 once in the heads, and we counted H3 once in the threes, so we've counted it twice. So we, what we have to do is we have to subtract the number of times H3 occurs, or that both events happen. So we have to remove this area because we've counted it twice already. So then when, then when we remove it, we have the total number. So that would be 7 twelfths. So that's basic probability. Um, questions can be more difficult than this a little bit. But the main part of the course is not about this basic stuff. It's about axiomatic probability, which I'll cover next time, and conditional probability, which will take a couple videos to explain because that's a little bit more challenging. So as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you would want to see more of this stuff, you can check out trevtutor.com and there's exams, videos, other courses on there. And if you really enjoy the stuff, share it with your friends. It's always great to be passed around as that guy on YouTube that teaches you stuff. So thanks for watching. Have a great day and hopefully I'll see you for some uh, axiomatic probability next time because that stuff's fun. The first big challenge in discrete mathematic proofs. It's going to be fun.